Hey, welcome to Blockchain in Aviation. I'm Mark Schultz with Digital Aircraft, and we're here today to continue our conversation about blockchain in aviation. We want you to continue to understand blockchain. We want you to understand how it's affecting our industry and how the challenges that we have today can potentially be solved by advanced distributed ledger technology in many different ways. I have a special guest here today who's really an expert at, uh, at looking at technology and how we deploy it in the industry, um, comes from a background of standards, and it's going to be an exciting conversation about how we're going to deploy blockchain at scale. Let me tell you a little bit about the company, if I could. So our company that's going to be coming here today is SkyThread, and my guest is Mark Robhoff. And Mark Robhoff comes to us with about 20 years of experience working in IT and in consulting and working in standards bodies and being one of those people that's in the, the organizations which help us to be able to decide how we can collaborate and work together. And today is the uh, CEO and co-founder of the company SkyThread. Let me go ahead and just bring him right in. Hey, Mark, glad to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much, Mark, for having me on your podcast. Very excited to be here. Yeah, very good. Hey, um, people always like to know where people are located. Where are you located today? I'm in sunny Irvine, California, although you wouldn't know it today because we are going through two days of very cloudy weather for some reason. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, uh, very good. Very good. I'm really glad to have you here. Hey, listen, could you just quickly um, say... Uh, uh, who you are and what do you do? Just in, in a short sentence. So. Sure. Yeah. So, so my background is is technical. Um, I've been in the industry for about twenty years. Been dedicated to aviation for twelve of those twenty. Uh, coming out of Carnegie Mellon, and uh, first a software engineer, and then uh, moved to more uh, business and executive centric roles. Uh, was the uh, global solution leader for aerospace and defense at IBM you know, for my uh, for seven years and then uh, worked at a, a couple of uh, a startups and uh, here I am at SkyThread. I'd say that um, you know, uh, the, the central thread in my career, I've been at the intersection of MRO uh, and operations and digital. Although uh, with my standards work, I also do a lot in emerging tech and engineering as well. Yeah, very good. Well, digital and aviation, those are my passions. So I'm yeah. looking forward to having a good, you know, discussion here today. Hey, Mark, um, I always like to engage our audience. Um, you know, people want to people I like knowing where people are watching from. And and so first of all, I like to ask everybody if you would just please share this live stream because it really helps us to get the word out. I noticed that we had a lot of sharing of this live stream before this uh, event here today. So please continue to do that. It helps us you know, um, engage in the industry and helps us get the word out. Um, second of all, you all know if you're a regular um, attender or watcher of this broadcast that I like to know where people are located. And uh, so listen, there's a comment box right down below. And if you would help me out and just put in there where you're watching from, we'd love to know. And I'll uh, throw your your uh, name up on the screen and we'll, uh, we'll acknowledge you. And then also during the broadcast, we have the opportunity to ask questions. And so feel free to put in questions. I like to find questions that can stump our guests. So the harder, the better. So let's try to do that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we have a few people that have joined us here. Um, Nolan, uh, Nolan, no, we have not been postponed. I hope you're seeing us. We're live right now. And we have uh, Jean-Marc, who's actually from SkyThread. Jean-Marc, I really appreciate you watching uh, probably every single broadcast that we've done. Um, we're on broadcast 19 right now out of 24. And uh, I thank you for continuing to watch. Um, we have Simon Barker, who's joined us from uh, Aerospace Tech Review Magazine. He's out of the UK. And, uh, you know, they've been a big supporter of blockchain um, out there, and they've done articles on it. And uh, have you worked with Simon in the past, um, uh, Mark? Yeah, I have. Um, so uh, I was at the Aerospace Tech Week conference uh, giving a couple of talks on my work on AI, uh, as well as what SkyThread was doing in uh, Toulouse last November. Oh, fantastic. Very good. And my business partner, Larry, has joined us. He's out there in Seattle. Larry, thanks for joining. Um, let's see. We have uh, Jim Fitzgerald. He's jumped in from uh, uh, Connecticut. Welcome, Jim. I've seen you on the broadcast in the past as well. Former Thank you. colleague of mine. He, oh, he's what? He's a former colleague of mine. Hey, Jim. Awesome. Perfect. Good perfect. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have people to join from all around the world. And that's what's so exciting to me is, is that uh, we have somebody here from Estonia. Um, Ogar, thank you for joining from Estonia. It's really great. Um, I have uh, Kamal, who's joined us from uh, Dubai. Welcome, um, Dubai. We have Sandra Debris, uh, awesome company, Exxon. He's joining us from uh, Amsterdam. Yep. You guys need to check him out. They do MLAI kind of work. Sander's, and, uh, a, Sander's a good friend. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, okay. Sander, I'm going to expect you to ask a really hard question for Mark then if you could, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, we, have, uh, we have um, Udo uh, joining us here from Frankfurt. Uh, thank you. Um, he says that uh, it's better weather than California. <laughs> All yeah. right, very good. 
Uh, we have uh, Helmuth Nemer. Um, Helmuth, uh, you know, we worked together years ago, and um, I, I, uh, I wish we could have worked together. It's actually been in the early 90s, and it's been many years, I think, since we've actually talked, and it's really glad to see yeah. you on the broadcast here. Hey, uh, Helmuth. Good. Uh, early, early, uh, S early structured data person, um, SGML, XML, you know, kind of work, uh, a lot yeah. of good work in the past in history. Yeah. Uh, there's Jim, he's, he's, uh, he's shouting us out again. And yeah. we have Ginger joining from Los Angeles. It's really great to have you also Ginger and, uh, uh, Rodolphe from Paris. Welcome. Welcome France. Wow. We just got a whole lot of people here. We have New York city. Um, we have, uh, uh, we have Surdeshan. He's here from India. Uh, we have Rachel, who's on my board. She's our chief creative um, director for our NFT project that's coming out. She works at DreamWorks. I'll give her a shout out and uh, gl glad to have her. We have William oh, Cecil really? with, uh, <laughs> with uh, Viasat, and we have other LinkedIn users. Listen, we could probably keep doing this for hours here, but it's always fun to know where people are watching from. And I, I just tell you how much I appreciate this community. And, you know, because we have so much engagement, it continues to reinforce to me that the topic that we're talking about is extremely important. And so that's why we're going to jump right in and get into the conversation today. So Actually, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear that there's a United Aircraft that has VSF. That's a, a big jump for, for that's, that's good to hear. <laughs> very good, very good. Hey, listen, um, okay, well, there's one last one here I'll just quickly point out. Uh, we have uh, Lorna I'm here from Phoenix. Uh, welcome, glad to have you on board. So listen, Mark, let's jump into our conversation. Sure. So so everybody watching today, we're talking about blockchain. I, I coined this conversation today, blockchain at scale, because I believe that uh, that uh, SkyThread is now positioning themselves to help us to um, bring blockchain to scale within the aviation industry. But Mark, people are always interested in knowing a little bit about your background and and uh, how did you get to where you are? Why, why do you even care about blockchain? And how, just what was your journey to get there? So great, great question. Um, just uh, to, to start, my, my, my worldview is that the industry comes before the technology. So I'm an industry person first, uh, and, and I look to see how emerging technology can solve industry problems um, and get very focused, uh, very focused on that. And uh, my background in, 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 as I said, digital and MRO um, is for the bulk of the last decade. I've been focused primarily on uh, working on big predictive maintenance platforms. I worked on uh, some of the largest platforms that were built by airframers and OEMs, and I worked on predictive maintenance problems with airlines across five continents. And you know, coming coming from you know the space of called the digital talking heads or the the digital supply chain, right? We like to to boast that modern aircraft generate terabytes of data per flight, uh, and that we live in this rich world of 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 data, and it's just you know. Yeah, easy to now take it all and drive value from it. And uh, what I found in in my experience working with the end customers, with the airlines, is that that's not at all true. Um, and I'll, I'll point out one of our guests, Willie, uh, who's a good friend, uh, actually taught me exactly how much data most uh, commercial aircraft generate per flight per day, because um, he was at Teledyne at the time. And uh, was working on data services for the Diffidus and and has, has a, a better position than most to know. Um, and there's a there's a wide gap, right? So you know while while uh, you know we get very excited about the you know the 787 and the A350 generating you know all this all this data, um, you know on average when you look at it, you know and you realize well most aircraft aren't 787s and most aircraft aren't um, A350s. You know, the average aircraft generates around 30 megs a day. Um, but more critically than that, what I found was just as important as the data that's being generated from the aircraft is being is 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 actually the data that's written about the aircraft that's created not from the aircraft but about the aircraft and maintenance information systems and ERPs. And when you look at how to really drive value uh, for our, for data and for digital transformation in the industry, uh, my epiphany was. Uh, that is where we should be focused. That is the pivot. So if we could take not the data necessarily today that's coming from the aircraft, and that's all well served by a whole range of prognostics and predictive programs, but data uh, that is 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 yeah, uh, transactional data or maintenance data, you know, that's that's put into the MES or the MIS, you know, the maintenance information system. That's where you can you know take a lot of operational costs of the industry. Um, so so on the technical side, that's that's the pivot. 
why blockchain and how blockchain comes into the picture? Well, you know, that speaks to a second thing I saw uh, in the industry, uh, which I think is is the chief challenge and, and problem that we at SkyThread are working to solve, which is how do you build an ecosystem of trust between actors that inherently um, are competitive and, and for where sharing data can create conflict of interest? Um, and blockchain is uniquely suited as a technology you know, to do that. Um, it can't do it on its own. Uh, it needs to fit uh, with a, a consortium uh, that can come together to, in a pre-competitive environment, create consensus-driven data governance. Um, and that's also what SkyThread has started in a consortium called Independent Data Consortium for Aviation. Um, so, so, so when you look at, you know, how do you leverage the data that exists today that's rich about the aircraft, it may not even be digitized, but, but in, in water and water swaths is digitized. Um, and then how do you solve for data governance? We see that as you know, unlocking the keys to scale. And I apologize if you hear any background, that's my son who's, you know, gotten up as energy filled as he gets off the, uh, gets, gets uh, to kindergarten this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Mark, that's okay. We all understand we're all working under different yeah. circumstances. But uh, Mark, um, you know, I, I, I resonate with a few things that you're saying there is, is number one, I've worked at a lot of different companies and implemented a lot of different systems that are basically used for execution and, uh, you know, either maintaining or executing maintenance. And um, there's a lot of operational data that exists out there that's never used. And so, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. And so, um, so I see we have some industry issues. So maybe one thing that we'll do is let's talk about a couple of different um, industry issues. And the reason that I want to do that is because many times people need to go from a bigger picture down to a little bit more specifics. And so, um, you know, can this problem be addressed in the area of planes and engines? So aircraft and engines. So let's hit three different three different areas. So number one, aircraft and engines. Sure. What is the real issue with aircraft and engines that exists so, today? So, so when we talk about the overhaul of engines uh, and we talk about how, how do you take you know, the business models that exist today, which are largely powered by the hour business models and further optimize them. Again, this is an area where the industry has spent a lot of money and has made a lot of strides on leveraging uh, IOT and sensor data, what you call you know, your full flight aircraft operational data to try to get smarter about the operational stance of the aircraft and its engines. But when we look at just the, the simple communication of data for uh, planning and executing an overhaul, right? There's, there, there's still a lot of stuff that's done offline that's done inefficiently. And where we can apply blockchain is on streamlining uh, the communication and, and the sharing of data uh, to take cost and time out of an engine overhaul process, right? So we look at, for instance, and this extends to parts as well. We look at um, we look at engine uh, uh, overhaul time. We look at turnaround time, SLA penalties. How do you reduce the turnaround time? How do you take cost out of the? How do you reduce or remove SLA penalties? And then also, as you get more and more data and and get more and more history together in that industry. A uh, single source of truth. So that's what really we're trying to create with the blockchain. It's an industry level data warehouse, creating a, a, a defensible, uh, uh, accurate single source of truth for the industry yeah. in terms of parts provenance. Yeah, you, we and definitely, how do you optimize the repair? Yeah, we, we definitely find ourselves in a situation where there's so many different sources of that data. And mm -hmm. uh, everybody, because they have separate businesses, have a tendency to you know hold that data you know, back for their separate businesses. Now, another area I know that is a challenge is parts because, you know, we have so many aircraft parts that exist out there and so many suppliers, you know, how does this potentially apply to the, the challenge of parts for the OEM and parts for the tier ones? Right. For parts for the OEM, parts for the tier one, where, where we see blockchain providing a ton of value is in uh, uh, OEMs and tier ones that manage pools and also what we call power by the hour or performance-based you know, uh, uh, contracts where uh, the tier one or the OEM is entering in a risk share with the operator to provide a better level of service at a lower cost, right? And, and for the operator, very much the same value prop. It's how do I get uh, correct data faster? So I have fewer parts in quarantine, so I have better visibility into my supply chain so that I can better optimize uh, my parts repair and supply process around where my planes are flying. Now, we believe that with uh, a blockchain providing parts track and trace uh, you know, across the fleet, airlines could be uh, reducing 
uh, their parts supply uh, and carry by two thirds. Not only is that a major cost savings, but we have SkyThread believe that that's a, a huge environmental benefit now as well, where the industry is looking for you know, big sustainability wins. You know, this is something that the industry can do today uh, while we work on the moonshots like new propulsion systems and, and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, how about, how about MROs? How do MROs fit into the picture? For MROs, it's really about the cost and the time of component repair. Right. So so in a component repair scenario, we look at how many times MROs, and this is very common, get a part and it just as a tag that says broken. Right. And and you know where the part came from, but you don't know anything about that part otherwise. So you, you talk about all the troubleshooting and the forensics that you have to do before getting to that right repair. And what I've seen in my career is the best way to take cost uh, out of the MRO process is provide better data so that you have to, so you can reduce the physical troubleshooting time. So we get, we, we reduce the forensics, we provide a cost optimized path to, uh, to, to repair. And again, it's about reducing turnaround time and it's about uh, avoiding those SLA penalties. So, so we find ourselves with aircraft and engines, parts, MROs, you know, pretty much everybody that's involved though. Um, yep. You know, we have a lot of challenges with data and availability of data and sharing of data and utilization of that data. So let's dig down a little bit deeper on that. Before I do that, let me just, I like to continue to recognize people, you know, that exist out there. Um, here's one of your business partners here, uh, Chuck Marks. He, uh, he's out there watching. Um, I have a lot of followers down in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I did work down at Goal and Embraer down there. And so we have a lot of people that watch from uh, Latin America and South America. Welcome. Great place. I hope to be going back there sometime soon in the near future. Um, Andrew Doyle jumping in from London. Thanks for joining us, um, Andrew. And uh, hey, if anybody else out there uh, wants to give us a, give you a shout out, just uh, give me a comment. But don't forget, we need some hard questions for Mark here um, to, to come in as well. So, hey, listen, um, Mark, let me let me take it down to the next level. So, I had mentioned briefly that uh, you know I, I've done a lot of system implementations and um, I've worked at the OEMs and I've worked at MROs and airlines and uh, one of the big challenges that we have is this data is all over the place, all right, and um, and so you know it's very very difficult um, you know to utilize data that's scattered in a lot of places. We we don't really have um, knowledge of what the sources of the data are sometimes. Oh, we do, but but uh, there are systems in place to be able to. Um, to structure the data and the authenticity of, of the data, but the ability to be able to leverage that data is challenged because it's distributed. All right. Now, how does how does blockchain help bring that together? So blockchain, and we're talking about a private blockchain, and that's what SkyThread is building, and it's building a private blockchain for the industry, right? But but when when you can address the industry top down and get alignment from the OEMs, from the tier ones, from the airlines, from MROs on a singular model for data governance and a, and a platform for creating that data governance. Then you're able to build a blockchain that can bring all those different siloed systems and all these different enterprises together. And when you can do that, you can, you can now automate, I think what has been the biggest technical inhibitor to driving value out of digital in our systems, which is how do you validate very quickly that you have the correct data? Right. So uh, we talk about uh, when you're when you're going through and trying to assess the quality of data in an MES, right, maintenance and engineering system, or MIS is another way you know people describe these. You know, a lot of that data, you know, especially for uh, older aircraft or for especially larger airlines that that um, you know, have have legacy processes, uh, was was first put on paper, right? So. Now, now you have people, and it's very common, who are reading, you know, handwritten uh, serial numbers and, and handwritten, you know, uh, notes, and they're typing that in. You get to, oh, okay, well, this serial number is that a zero or is that an O? To give a very specific example, is that an I or an L or a one, right? And and you know, sometimes it's very hard to validate, you know, okay, are we talking about the right part here without actually taking the part off the airplane and looking at what's stamped on the part, which is oftentimes an expensive proposition. But when you know that parts go through a life cycle where they're touched by multiple actors and you've connected multiple actors to that industry blockchain, now you have multiple sources of data conferring on that same part. And then you can automate truth from looking at that conference. It's a lot like how fly-by-wire systems work, where you have you know three computers that are built differently, that come from different architectures, all doing the same thing, conferring on truth. Right, it's applying that fly-by-wire logic to data in the MRO space. Yeah. Okay. 
So, um, uh, Mark, I, I like to grab people's questions as they come in. Um, it kind of helps keep the momentum going. Um, sometimes the name of the LinkedIn user doesn't come across. I don't know why, but this particular person just has a general question. It says, can you download the data information from engines and APUs um, and engineering evaluations during a pre-buy inspection process? So if you're going to be if you're going to be um, acquiring an aircraft, a used aircraft, or maybe you have a lease return or something, how can you know blockchain help us? in that process or in a, in a pre-acquisition process? Sure. Well, so today SkyThread isn't, isn't, isn't focused today yet on enabling uh, what we'd call you know, the, the data coming from the aircraft, from the engine, from the APUs, but we can imagine how this will work in the future you know, with, with, with the governance network that we've set up. So uh, what, what blockchain is, is really great at is uh, automating and enforcement of consensus-based governance policy. So we talk about how do you mitigate, and then the challenge in the industry is really how do you mitigate conflict of interest? So if you're acquiring an aircraft, right, and and you have, let's say, a Honeywell APU and a CFM engine on that aircraft, you can imagine on a blockchain, there are prescribed contracts that uh, are, are um, uh, driven by a data governance consensus form with input from Honeywell and CFM that say, okay, here in these conditions, how you see the data and, and how data that, that for either uh, trade secret reasons or financial reasons, how does that data get redacted or removed, right? So, so that you're not sitting, what, what, what we want us, what, what, what we're trying to, to, to solve for is sitting at a, a negotiating table for six months or longer trying to agree on how to share the data. Right, um, I think I think we we have a good sense that sharing data is absolutely necessary to driving value for anyone. Um, so it's just how do we put a, a process in place uh, that we can all trust to make sure that the data is leveraged in the manner in which you know it's intended. Yeah, you know, Mark, I think that sometimes people have a difficult time grasping the most advanced concepts. And so I go back and make old examples sometimes. Like, for example, is is that, you know, we didn't really understand the value and sharing of data before we got on the Internet. And now we can't even understand how we can live without the ability to be able to share data. And, uh, you know, blockchain is going to take us really to the next level, you know, mm -hmm. in doing that. Hey, I'm going to bring up a couple of specific um, questions about SkyThread. Before I do that, it uh, looks like you have one of your strategic partners on here, um, uh, Logan Johnson. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, Logan. SAE International. Glad to have you on board. Um, we have you one. Should, you should ask him where he is right now. Where he's located? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> see, I'm sure he's either in Pittsburgh or Puerto Rico. Is one or the other. Oh, is that right? Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. And then we have uh, Warner, who's joined us from uh, Austria. Um, one of my guests in uh, next week, at the end of next week, is um, uh, is leading the blockchain, the city of blockchain effort in Austria, um, in uh, Vienna, and uh, so that'll be an interesting conversation. But welcome from Austria. Hey, listen, Mark, I want to get it down to the next level. Um, sure. You know, one of the challenges I've had in working with people in digital transformation and aviation is that there isn't a company out there that exists that doesn't have an existing IT portfolio, right? And so the challenge that we have is we have all these existing systems and then somebody comes along and says, you need to do something even more, all right? And so one of the things I wanna do is I wanna understand a little bit about how SkyThread fits into infrastructures. And I'm gonna do that in two steps. The first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, can you tell us a little bit about you know, the high level functionality that SkyThread blockchain solution you know, provides? And then we're gonna get down to the next level of detail. I see on this slide here, it says that there's a utility layer and a transaction layer. Could you give me some understanding of what that really means? Yeah, sure. So this talks about the makeup and the, the architecture of our blockchain network, right? And and the network of networks that we're connecting. And one, one thing that we talk about uh, in our white paper is how while we are building a, a specific blockchain network, what we're really trying to solve for is, is, is an industry standard you know, source of truth. And that will include connecting to other blockchains. But but here um, and 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 we call that in our white paper, you know, concept of the the chain of chains and how SkyThread is going to help enable for the industry a blockchain of blockchains. But this really talks about the blockchain that SkyThread is building um, for value add for our customers. So the utility layer describes uh, effectively the master data management you know, uh, structure of how we connect what we call, uh, and I think we'll get to this in the next slide, 
four P's, right? So when we talk about, you know, to create you know, a 360 degree view of a plane in all its parts or a part in all the planes it's been on, right? As, a, as a, an example of a pivot, we track uh, aircraft. So P is planes, right? And then the next P is parts, all the parts of an aircraft, because an aircraft in a lot of ways is not like a car. It's like a factory or, or a house. It's a physical plant. And really what makes up an aircraft are all the parts that are, that are connected to it. Uh, creating the ability, you know, to fly from place A to place B. Then we know in MRO, right, parts are worked on and aircraft themselves, of course, are worked on by people. So the third uh, uh, P is people. So it's creating master data around uh, technicians, their certifications and their training currencies. And the last piece of the puzzle is place, knowing where parts are taken off, you know, what hangars or what airports and where they're going to be sent for component repair, for instance, and where that repair, uh, and then for aircraft, where those B and C and D checks, where all those overhauls are being done. Um, so, so again, let's, uh, let's bring out that next graphic. I think that'll help, you know, um, sure. exemplify that a little bit. Um, hey, before you talk to this real quick, um, your friend, uh, Logan, he's checked in, he's in Pittsburgh, by the way. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as part of the next conversation here, what I'm gonna ask you about this slide, let's an answer Saunders' question. Saunders says, do you see airlines using SkyThread as a replacement for their system um, at some point in the future, or will this be an enabler? So as part of this discussion now of where does it fit in? So this slide here, I know these, I know these graphics are, are small, I'm sorry, but uh, what I was trying to do is I was trying to give Mark an opportunity to be able to explain how SkyThread fits into an existing system, and then you can answer um, Saunders' question, it says, well, will it replace it? So can you give us an idea of how it fits into somebody's IT portfolio? Yeah, so so for Saunders' question, it's very much the latter. So we're not replacing MIS, right? We are we are a, you know, a thread that fits into an airline or an OEM's existing IT stack and better enables the data in that stack. Um, and that's, that's a very early and critical design decision we all made uh, starting the company. Um, and it, and it, it comes from my, my colleagues' past work in this space, driving maintenance information systems implementation, my work specifically from predictive maintenance. We recognize, especially when there are airlines, you know, when this, is, this is really focused at the airline customer because you look at the market, you go from two airframers to four engine makers to 30 tier one to 100 MROs to 400 airlines that represent the bulk of the flying fleet. So, you know, you're going to have more airlines to address than, than anyone else. We know that airlines need a new system to log into, like they need a hole in the head. So you know, sitting down with maintenance control supervisors and, and technicians in both a line and a base maintenance capacity, um, fitting, fitting this value add into how they operate today, the systems they use, how they make decisions, that's, that's critical. So what SkyThread is really designed to do, and this is enabled by that you know, transaction layer that you had on the last page, is to integrate into the existing ERPs and MIS systems that the industry uses to uh, automatically pull data to create you know, that 360 degree view enabled by the utility layer. Um, and here what SkyThread is doing is it's curating the data, it's validating the data. So that's a very critical low level value add. Uh, and then it's providing views and insights that can help optimize uh, the, the maintenance process and the supply chain process within the systems and tools that airlines and their supply chain use today. So Mark, let me ask you this, is that um, if I summarized this up and said, if I'm uh, an airline or an MRO, you know, um, and I'm looking at how do I leverage, you know, SkyThread, the blockchain platform, is, is it, why is it that SkyThread and its blockchain technology is an improved approach over what people are doing today, say using databases and, and other messaging and integrations? So, so number one, you know, at the lowest level, it's breaking down silos, right? And when you can break down silos, you can break down costs and you can get past, I think some of the largest roadblocks that have inhibited digital transformation in this space for the last decade and a half, right? It's about how do you validate information quickly? How, how do you get good information from the source you know, versus versus having to trans transcribe paper. Uh, it's about uh, how do you get you know timely information and create the easy button you know that can provide in well, well one fell swoop all of the data you need to transact on many different uh, you know daily uh, aftermarket sustainment uh, uh, activities. 
Well, let me ask you this, is that I, I uh, titled this session Blockchain at Scale. And I want to ask you, is it what are the biggest inhibitors keeping us from blockchain at scale? What's going to keep us or what's going to either enable us or keep us from a full scale um, implementation of blockchain? So it all comes back down to data governance and how you solve for data governance. So this is where, again, um, you know, my colleagues and I have a background. You know, we talk about a background in standards. Right. It's not about it's not about for us. Oh, we need new standards. Right. We need new data standards. Data standards already exist. Right. And that and then we can use them as is what really, you know, the, the, the connection is, you know, when you when you when you work in the standard space, what you're really doing is you're bringing a very highly competitive industry together in a very specific pre competitive form. Right. And getting folks to align on how to solve a problem. Right. And, and that's what that's what, you know, our our you know, sort of a signature is to this industry. We have taken um, a, a stab and have gotten great amount of traction getting the industry aligned on how to solve for data governance. Once you, with a, with a shared model for data governance, um, then the industry can align top down on enabling blockchain. Um, without that, what we see is, you know, blockchain can certainly provide a good amount of IT value, but you're gonna hit limits of scale if you're building bilateral blockchains or, or point to points. Um, so, you know, I, I you know, we, again, I, I, I share your, your, um, your views, especially with an international audience, uh, not to rely on analogies, but I think this is a very important one that most folks get, right? There's a difference between a single point-to-point -point freeway or highway or motorway or expressway or auto, autobot versus the network, right? So it's, it's, you solve for data governance and you can build the interstate highway network or the Autobahn network or the auto route network or, you know, your country's, you know, highway network of choice. Right. And that's, that's what you need to get value. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, I think that many times the uh, concept of roads and bridges and entrances and, you know, uh, and exits are used when we're trying to explain, you know, blockchain and, uh, well, yeah, it's the information super highway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, not not that long ago, I was trying to explain to somebody, you know, what um, you know, what a bridge was, what polygon bridge was, for example, and and I used exactly the same thing. I used a road example and a bridge, and you know, you need to get from one place to another, from one chain to another, and many times you need to use a bridge. But you know, so having having a super highway and on ramps and off ramps and bridges and infrastructure like that, you know, I see what you're doing is you're bringing an infrastructure which can connect. You know, yeah. and, and just much like in the U.S. in the 50s when they put the interstate system in place, you know, um, at that time, it connected, you know, the U.S. in a way that it never was before. And so exactly. you know, I think that the blockchain environment is going to do the same thing. And you're right. If all the roads were different sizes and if every bridge was a different height, you know, we wouldn't be able to effectively, you know, transit those infrastructures. All right. But, and if yeah. But there's a nuance there. I mean, there and 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 when it gets back to the fact that there are other you know uh, blockchain efforts in the industry, there were uh, highways right before the interstate highway network was christened, right? You know, and but but they get they get integrated in, right? So, you know, those other blockchains be the Pennsylvania Turnpike analogy, or you know, the New York. Yeah, I grew up in the Northeast, yeah. New York Thruway or the Mass Pike, whatever. Right? Those those were built in the '40s, and and uh, you know the interstates came in in the '50s, and and then they you, you get integrated, but you need that integration, right? And 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 then, you know, it's really around you know solving for for the the acceleration of digital transformation at the industry level, versus within any one enterprise and going you know point to point. Well, uh, you know, blockchain, aviation, digital, digital transformation, these are all passions of mine. And I generally find two categories of people that are watching these broadcasts. One, those that want to learn more and they want to engage, and those that are looking for a solution or an opportunity to maybe be able to implement something for a current problem they know of. So, Mark, let's break that up into two pieces. Number one, if somebody's out there watching today, they want to learn more, they want to understand how can they engage in this industry challenge, either with you or with with governance, or what recommendation do you have to sure. learn more today? So, to, so there, 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 you know, are two, two, you know, to use the word thread. Uh, there are two threads that are driving. Um, the first is the governance piece, and that is a consortium that we launched in conjunction with SkyThread. Actually, well, uh, almost uh, eight months after we started SkyThread, it's called the Independent Data Consortium for Aviation. 
so that was launched in October of last year. And for the, the six months after launch, you know, we had a core group of people from the industry working with us to create a charter that defines the mission, the scope, the org structure, voting rights, et cetera. That was approved in July. Now we've assembled a board of directors and we're going to begin to market and really launch to industry this consortium in the fall. And uh, for those that are interested in joining this consortium, uh, you can reach out to me over LinkedIn. Uh, the consortium does not have a website or a, uh, an inquiries email address. So the best way uh, for, for those listening to this podcast is find me on LinkedIn, um, and I'd be very happy to get you personally connected to that effort. Now, the second way to get involved is through uh, SkyThread itself. So when we talk about what we're doing, we're building a network, but everything starts somewhere. Uh, and I'm very, very excited to announce that we, this month, are soft launching our first product built on that network, which is a parts track and trace product, right? And that is going to be um, grand launched in September. So expect, uh, you know, a, a heightened media presence uh, and, and social presence from us as we enter into you know, the busy fall period. Um, the, way, the way we go to market with our parts track and trace solution. Right. And we start with parts because parts move the fastest and, and they are the building blocks for an aircraft. Right. So we start with parts and then we're going to be starting our aircraft uh, 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 solution in, in, in very short order. Um, but the way we go to market with parts is we look for uh, centers of, of cluster activity. So our launch customers, for instance, Right. Uh, we have uh, our, our launch airline is an airline that has a very large MRO business, right, that that works with, um, you know, uh, lots of other airlines in the region and across the world. And by launching with the MRO business, right, we've also launched with the MRO's key suppliers um, and uh, some of their some of their airlines. Uh, so if you're here today and you represent an MRO uh, with a network to go and work with, um, that's, that's where we're going to get the most value quickly, right? Um, and then, and then we, we have a lot of the tier one. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, we were surprised with uh, how much interest um, and engagement we've gotten from the tier one space. Um, but we have a lot of tier ones uh, already engaged with us uh, being hooked up onto our, onto our network. And then where those tier ones run uh, for, uh, power by the hour programs and have pools of their own, that's another pivot to go and to go now to their networks. And then we go network to network to network to network to network, um, you know, going down, going down the tree, so to speak. Um, but uh, we're really excited to be uh, uh, hard launching our, our first uh, solution after a year and a half of development. Um, the, the soft launch feedback we've gotten this far has been extremely positive. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in getting value out of this network today, um, you had the slide up there earlier, info at skythread.aero. And we're still a small company. So you know, I monitor that uh, uh, email daily, um, as does my business development team. So you're going to hear from either myself or from one of my uh, uh, leaders uh, in the company. Yeah, very good. So, hey, listen, Mark, um, one of the main reasons that I started this uh, series, um, it was a eight week, 24 episode series. And people are saying, are you nuts? Why are you doing that? You know, well, because what I saw was in the industry that there was a lot of people that were interested in this topic of blockchain. And the reality is, is that there's only a small number of people that are really engaged in it. OK, and we are constantly looking for ways to create efficiency in the aviation industry, it's critical for us to create efficiency in the aviation industry today in order for it to be successful. We see delays and cancellations, we see cost, we see inflationary pressures, we see problems getting labor you know, in the industry. And the one of the critical ways that we can solve this is through digital um, technology and by creating efficiencies in all these areas. I personally have seen you know, 25, 40, 90% reductions in labor in certain IT implementations. And so we know that we can improve the industry by doing this. And blockchain is one of those technologies that has the opportunity to be able to do that. So I started this series so that people would be able to engage and better understand blockchain and find companies like SkyThread and all the others that we've you know, featured and engaged with over the last uh, you know, weeks, seven weeks right now at this point. So for those of you that are interested in engaging, you had the contact information, reach out. Um, if you're interested in just engaging in the industry and learning more, certainly you can learn more by following these live broadcasts. 
Um, let me see. We do have another question or two that have come up here. I don't want to let those people go. Let me throw this one up here, Mark, and see just what you think. Um, how does your concept offer different from like Block, Arrow, or uh, Veritext or others? So, Mark, before you answer that, um, you know, I've had Block Arrow and others who are on the broadcast, and I generally don't try to make my guests be an expert on somebody else's product, okay? And so if you could, don't answer necessarily on what's the differences between you and Block Arrow, just what do you do best, you know, I guess maybe we'll ask. So, so yeah, I, I don't want to compare us, you know, uh, directly to, to potential competitors, although I think some of those uh, companies mentioned are actually more uh, partners or potential partners of what we're doing. Um, really where SkyThread's niche is, is that, you know, we, we are of the industry, right? So <clears throat> SkyThread as a company is, is comprised of some very senior ex-leaders from companies like Honeywell and Airbus and United Airlines, as well as um, senior leaders uh, and thought leaders who ran aerospace at places like IBM and PwC uh, and, and others that have served the industry for <clears throat> decades and decades and decades. So we, you know, we believe in the power of technology. I mean, I am a technologist at my core, right? But but we are industry first, and and what Skythread really is focused on doing um, is creating the network. We are able to go because because of the industry leadership that's in the company, we're able to go and and address the industry holistically and top down. Um, and this is actually when we think about the go to market and, and your background in digital, I think Mark, you'll appreciate this, right? So, so the, the, the companies that have served the market, right, um, in, 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 whether in aerospace or their lines, um, always uh, tend to serve the market in two, right? This isn't, this isn't unanimously true, but it's ubiquitous. Where you have a group um, and a PL that represents aerospace and then and calls on aerospace customers, you know, your Boeing, your Airbus, your tier ones. And then separately, you have a group that focuses on travel and transportation and calls on airlines. Um, and when, when that dichotomy exists and you look at where, um, you know, the, the focus of digital in that travel and that airline space is, very little of it tends to be in MRO or in operations. Very little of it touches the aircraft, um, which is really where I've been focused and my colleagues have been focused for our whole careers. And what SkyThread I think is uniquely done in industry is tied to, is brought the industry together. And we do this both in consortium and in SkyThread's own go-to-market holistically as one. So we serve airlines, we serve MROs, we serve lessers, we serve tier ones, the engine makers and the airframers equally, right? Um, and I think that's unique. And I think that that uh, that gives us um, really a unique perspective and some unique capabilities to bring to market to solve some of the, both the, the trust roadblocks and the acceleration roadblocks that we have all struggled with for years and you know over a decade now and trying to get the value we all see out of digital. Yeah, you know, one of the things I'm always a proponent of is, is that why do you need to go out and try to do this on your own? You know, we should be understanding and leveraging the knowledge of people around us, and we should be learning from those things and then building on, you know, more excellent solutions and approaches from the people that we work with, this network of people that you've talked about. So I believe that experience and leveraging the experience of those who have gone before us you know, is an important part. And there's nothing wrong with using that knowledge and that experience because, you know, you know, somebody could go spend 30 or 40 years and go figure something out all on their own. But hey, why not leverage the knowledge of people around you? You know, is what it really is. Yeah. And I'll say one other thing um, yeah. that, 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 uh, you know, a lot of us have recognized, but, but I think it's seldom really talked about, especially when addressing airlines in digital, is that when you look at where airlines have gotten digital and gotten value out of digital, it's above the wing. It's in places like revenue management, it's in ticketing, it's in supply chain management, not supply chain management, but it's in um, the, the, uh, 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 you know, the, the market predicting, predicting it's, it's in loyalty. And what, what we have in mature markets, I think, is a reestablishment of equilibrium. Um, and, and, you know, if you're an airline in that mature market and you're leveraging data and, you know, good consolidation and scale to your advantage, 
the next place to go to get a competitive lead, right, in terms of and critically in cost is applying digital now to the asset, to MRO, right, to, to, the, to your physical operations. And here we're just beginning to scratch the surface. It's blue ocean. And that's, that's what excites us, right? You know, we're at the beginning of the journey. Yeah. And in just regarding the journey, you know, everybody's at a different place in the journey. Some people are at the beginning, middle and more advanced. And, uh, you know, if, if you were to say, well, we have digital in all the areas we need, well, maybe that's true, but what's next? You know, what do we do to continue to advance that? What do we do to continue to create greater efficiency? You know, how can we optimize what we're doing? Um, you know, like for, for example, I've had a number of drone uh, guys who are trying to address tra air traffic management because of the proliferation of uncrewed vehicles and drones. You know, so you might say that I'm in a place today where everything is working just fine, but can you handle 10 times the activity when we have all this growth and proliferation? Oh, that's another, yeah. That, so that's a, a, another conversation that I can espouse on for some time, but we won't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, listen, hey, um, I want to recognize a couple of other quick people, then we're going to be wrapping things up here. But we have uh, a guest from uh, Pen uh, Panama, um, from Avio Direct. Uh, welcome, Edgardo. And uh, Deborah, who's constantly um, engaging in social media on LinkedIn. Deborah, we really appreciate your enthusiasm for aviation and really all that you do. Thank you for your contributions. And uh, hey, as I bring things to close here, Mark, um, I just wanted to say, let's put the slide up one more time because it was a little bit ago, but uh, uh, how people can get in touch with you. Um, if you want to get in touch with Mark, uh, here's some places you can either LinkedIn or email or on their website. And uh, if you're someone who's interested in engaging in the industry, reach out to Mark. Uh, if you're someone who's interested in learning more about SkyThread and how it can help you in your business, you can reach out as well. Hey, I have a lot of people who ask me, how can I see the, the live broadcast that we've done? And uh, many times on LinkedIn, it's difficult to be able to do that. And so we have all kinds of places that we do this broadcast. You may not know it, but we broadcast on LinkedIn and Twitter and on YouTube and, uh, and on Twitch. And we have all over the place, our social media is everywhere. And uh, it's much more organized, like in YouTube, for example, than it is on LinkedIn. So you can reach out and you can see previous broadcasts in some of those locations. I also yeah. found you on Apple Podcasts. Or, uh, so what's that? Is, I said, I also found you on Apple Podcasts. This is where I usually go to if I'm on a, a Okay, on there a you go. So, yeah. so we also, um, when this, when this uh, broadcast is over, um, we rip it off to an audio podcast and, uh, and it goes out there. And you can also watch it on pretty much every audio podcast location that exists you know, out there. Um, okay, well, listen, one more thing quickly before I wrap it up, um, our upcoming week here, uh, we actually had a cancellation on Wednesday. Somebody had a family emergency and they weren't able to uh, participate on Wednesday. And so I found a really outstanding um, alternative for you. Actually, I'm bringing in an expert from the industry who is actually very active with large companies and large brands in implementing of NFTs. And so we're going to be looking at NFTs at scale on Wednesday. And so if you're interested in that and how that might apply to your business, you definitely are going to want to join us um, this Wednesday, just two days from now. And then next week, we have uh, Earnhardt Solutions and the future of blockchain, which is going to be um, part of our conversations next week. But uh, I know toward the end of a series, sometimes you start to lose a little bit of energy, but I'm trying to keep the energy up and I'm trying to bring really good, strong content to you, like with uh, SkyThread here. And so stick with me. We have actually this week and next week um, where we're going to be bringing things to a conclusion on this uh, blockchain and aviation. And I'm going to throw one more plug in there is, is that uh, I've had so much interest from people that we are going to be continuing the education and knowledge in our digital aircraft video portal, where we're gonna be doing webinar sessions, private webinar sessions, where we're gonna be doing training and teaching to help people to continue to learn and understand blockchain and uh, how they can implement it in their businesses. Because we're really passionate about helping companies to be successful in doing that. So keep an eye out for that. Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Mark, I really appreciate you and all you're doing in the industry and your passion for what you do, it's obvious. And uh, just the expertise that you've brought together in your team, I think is really going to make a difference. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for putting this together. I know your, your passion um, as well shines through and, uh, and, and we all benefit from your continued evangelism of digital in this space and the work you do to connect all of us together is fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Hey, listen, everybody, thanks for joining today. And we'll see you again on Wednesday. I always close by saying fair winds and following season. <laughs> Have a great day. And I wish all of you to join us on Wednesday. Bye for now.